Hello and welcome back to Prophecy of Pandora and our Iron Man challenge. Now I have restructured our army just a little bit and this army is absolutely deadly. Or at least I hope it is. I hope it is going to be deadly. Anyway, we're going to place everyone down there apart from the archers. We have 32 archers, 88 cavalry and just, just to let you know, I have every single unit from my knighthood order right here in my army and this is gonna be either an absolute bloodbath in other words i am going to absolutely destroy the opponent because these guys are actually attempting to besiege laria at this time and uh, a couple of them actually managed to run off and i decided hey <laughs> we're gonna go in here and see what we can do so i'm just gonna tell my people just to dismount amazingly enough it looks as though my sergeants are tagged as archers and not cavalry which is a bit of a mistake on my part so i'm going to need to rectify that after this battle but otherwise uh, i think we don't have to worry too much i'm going to tell them to get off their mounts as well because i don't really want my crossbowmen to have any kind of problem because they might not have very good horse archery and so on and so forth but anyway we're basically just going to absolutely murder the dashar in every single way you can see exactly why because <laughs> we have uh, I believe 76 iron knights I think we have something along those lines we have an amazing amount of them and we have I think 50 or 40 or something like that iron sergeants and I'm hopeful that we will not lose too many of them in this uh, in this battle because bear in mind that these guys are well you know they're, they're, they're still kind of good, you know, the Dashar are still kind of good, so they're not going to be absolute pushovers or anything like that, but I'm hopeful that Anson will do his very best to prevent any casualties on our part right here. Uh, I'm actually thinking, shall we, shall we charge in or no? Because we are actually losing quite a few units just because we are maybe being a little bit too stationary, but bear in mind that the enemy has a huge amount of horse archers, as you can see over here. Look at how many horse archers they have. It's absolutely crazy. So I'm hopeful that maybe my people will be able to defeat them. Are they really... Are we really losing against horse archers? I might have to retreat here, to be honest. I'm going to retreat and actually just see what we can do. Because you can see here, we lost 15 units. I mean, we killed m many more than that. But I was hopeful for a much better ratio than this. Very strange. They had 275 when we started, now they have 191. I guess that's all right, we have 265. But this time around, I'm gonna keep them on their mounts and we're gonna see if they maybe do a little bit better at uh, tracking down the opponent. I'm gonna stay more along here as well because just look at the battlefield. There's so many different rocks and obstacles in the form of trees and everything that it is gonna make it very easy or hopefully very easy for us to pin down those troublesome horse archers they're making things very difficult for us but anyway hopefully we will see lethal Duran come back relatively soon and uh, then he'll give us a nice report on the progression of our forces i'm hopeful that he will hopefully start leveling up a couple of their horse archery skill points i think that would be kind of nice but if he doesn't then that's fine i mean you know if he doesn't want to do that, then that's all right. And we'll just have to use them in more of a stationary role. And maybe I'll have to remove their horse or something like that. But I don't really want to do that if I can help it. Because them having a horse is making everything much, much easier for us. Maybe I should actually just charge in. Should I just charge in? I mean, it's a 124 against 124 battle. So we should theoretically be absolutely fine here. But you never know. Maybe, uh, maybe it's going to be a bit difficult. Well... I'm going to wait and see what the Dashar decide to do because they might have, again, a relatively overwhelming force of horse archers. As you can see right here, they seem to have quite a few of them running along here. And they do have a couple coming into our actual lines. But I shouldn't have to worry about them too much. Maybe we should actually tell them to charge in now. Maybe. As you can see, we're getting a good ratio right here. This is a much better ratio than last time. I'm actually wondering why that is. I think it's probably because of our positioning. Our positioning on this hill is really good. It's much, much better 
than it was in the previous battle. So that's probably the reason why we are seeing so much difference in regards to how many casualties we're taking. So I'm happy with this. Very happy with this in actual fact. And let's see what the enemy's doing. Yeah, so as you can see, our forces are actually automatically changing their positioning to uh, kind of prevent the opponent from doing maximum damage to us, which I got to say is really, really smart of them. And now, look at that. <laughs> zero. Zero casualties on our side right here. Absolutely zero casualties. No idea why that is. I guess, again, I guess it is because of the environment giving us such a, an amazing advantage. And uh, the enemy is having some difficulties. Absolutely having a huge amount of difficulties with this. I'm going to stay here for the most part because what I would like to do is hopefully eliminate the second wave of enemy units that is going to be coming in here. As you can see, they're, they're coming in from over there, and maybe we can... Uh, oh, I've actually run out of arrows, that's kind of a shame, but whatever the case, my people will soon run out of arrows as well, and when that happens, they have Doom Maces. And as you know, Doom Maces are the premier weapon for taking people prisoner. And, uh, oh yeah, I should also mention that there was a tournament in Laria very, very recently. I did it and I achieved victory there as well. So that gave me an additional 22,000 in cash because of course we, we kind of had a bit of a problem earning some cash recently. And I went as low as 50 or 40,000 in my inventory and that's, ooh, that's a bit close, you know? That is a bit close. So it's nice that we are much higher in terms of how much money we have now. And then we'll hopefully be able to uh, continue that, you know, because I really don't want to be on the edge of bankruptcy basically every single time I receive my wages. And uh, yeah, that, that would be pretty awful. Anyway, I'm going to tell my people to charge in now because even if they don't have any ammunition, they can use their Doom Maces, but if they do, then they can continue to be very proficient horse archers. I don't think they're going to be that good as horse archers to be honest because I think their horse archery skill is not the greatest but I don't exactly know what it is right now it might actually be five or six if it is five or six then I think that's perfectly fine and uh, I think the only reason why they might not be as accurate as you want them to be is because of their proficiencies and that is also being worked on by Lethal Deren himself and he has insane proficiency so Theoretically, he should be able to advance all of our guys' proficiencies up to his level. And, uh, yeah, that's that's probably going to take a bit of extra time. But it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. But as you can see, this was perfect. Absolutely perfect engagement. We had a, uh, a pretty amazing vantage point up there. As you can see, that's the hill that the Dashar would have seen coming from this direction. And, yeah, we should have just known that that was going to be an absolute bloodbath for them. But that's not my, that's not my fault, you know. If they, if they want to charge into us and uh, try to do their horse archer, you know, horse archer silliness, then, uh, then that's up to them, you know. <laughs> if they want to run into us and do that, then I will be happy to oblige my Iron Knights and Iron Sergeants ranged weapons pointed straight at them. And uh, I think we are basically done. There's only a couple of units remaining here. There's a Sinkalian Temptress. That's kind of weird to see that. But yeah, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to take a bunch of people prisoner as well. I was actually partially thinking that what I would do is place basically every single unit except my Iron Knights and Iron Sergeants in the garrison. And then take those Knights and Sergeants and go and fight stuff. So if, if I really, really need cash, that is what I'm actually going to do. Because if I really need cash, there's no tournament ever, you know, all anywhere around to be found. And I don't have any way to uh, get some good loot or whatever the case may be. If I am in dire straits, I will just take a massive prisoner-taking band of units and just run around taking, I don't know, anything that I can prisoner because that's what they would be able to do. So I just switch them to using their Doom Maces only and then they would be 
Perfect. Perfect for that. Anyway, this guy actually is a bad-tempered lord, but as I have already explained in a previous episode, honor is paramount right now. Honor is just the best thing that I can go for right here, and I'm hopeful that maybe there's an easier way of me getting honor. I know that there is a, a way to utilize the Noldor in that way, and I'm thinking that I might try to do that, but I need to get everything that I can from the Noldor before I do that, because here's the thing. If I launch a surprise attack against the Noldor castle, which you can do if you have a death wish or if you're sufficiently prepared, <laughs> either one, but the point is, is that if you do that, your relation is going to go all the way down with the Noldor to, I think, isn't it like minus 100 or something like that? It might be minus 100. And then they become enemies again. And this is actually a good thing on a couple of levels. Now, it's also a bad thing because, of course, then you have those people attempting to kill you all the time. But the cool thing about it is that you are able to basically have an unlimited supply of units that you can take from your castles. So let's say, uh, let me just go onto the world map in just a second and I'll actually just show you an example. But there you go, look at that, 52. Wow, 52 prisoners we were able to take right there. That's pretty crazy. Anyway, as you can see, we're at Laria right now. There's a bunch of vassals. They actually run off, ran off into this direction right here. Uh, but yeah, anyway. So let's say that there's uh, let's say that there's many many Noldor enemies in the in the forest here, and I have, you know, a mercenary company or something like that instructed to run around near to White Stag Castle. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to attack any enemy that is nearby, and that is probably going to be Noldor in that case, because they're going to be uh, you know against us again. You know, they're going to be aggressive towards us and they will inevitably get taken prisoner by that mercenary company or by us you know we could always take them prisoner as well and a really good way to get honor is obviously one of those two uh you know one of those two uh, methods so if you take them prisoner you take the noldor nobles prisoner as far as i'm aware the nobles are the ones that actually give you the honor uh, but, uh, yeah, if you take the Noldor Nobles and then release them, they give you, I think it is one honor every single time you release them, which is really quite amazing because just, just look at it this way. Let's say that you have a mercenary company like the Snow Lion Brigade, which I currently have running around patrolling around Laria. Let's say I have those guys and, uh, they've got 400 units or something like that. Let's say they have a hundred prisoners and 50 of those are Noldor Nobles. Then you're going to have 50 honor just sitting there waiting for you to gain it. And that is just crazy, in my opinion. That's a really, really cool way to do it. And I think someone actually mentioned in the comments that they have uh, 395 honor. Good on you. Good on you for that because, wow, that, that must have taken a, a quite a while to get to that point. But the point is, is that if you have that insane amount of honor, I mean, I've got 168 right now, which is, uh, you know, not exactly great. I was hopeful that we'd maybe have much more than that at this point. But anyway, the point is, is that with 395 honor, uh, their, uh, their CKO troops cost like five and three prestige to recruit and induct into their uh, knighthood order which is just amazing i mean that really is crazy good because then you're gonna have basically all i wouldn't say an unlimited supply of knights and sergeants and things like that but you're gonna have a very good time inducting those anyway saren is currently under attack but where is it there Okay, well, we might want to go to Seven Cross Keep, actually, because I was actually partially thinking that we would go over there. Mm. As you can see, we're also losing 11,000 every single week. Apparently, it's uh, skyrocketed up. Oh, yeah, I know why that is. Okay, so it's gone skyrocketing up because of the Snow Lion Brigade capturing so many units and rescuing them. That was the main problem with doing that. Uh, and I kind of weighed that up before I went in and did it. And I thought to myself, I should probably get Roland over here, shouldn't I? I should probably get Roland. 
I should probably get Alistair or something like that to come over and to, uh, you know, be kind of like the sponge to soak up all those rescued, you know, rescued units. But uh, I attempted to do that actually off screen. I attempted to ask, uh, I think it was Roland specifically at the time. I said, hey, uh, can you follow me? You know, I've got a, I've got a plan, you know. And he was like, no. <laughs> he was like, no, no, I won't follow you. And uh, that was eh, kind of frustrating because if he had taken all of the rescued prisoners, then we wouldn't have to pay uh, his wages, basically, you see. So that would have technically been a much better way of rescuing those things. But at the time, I had no other course of action, basically. The only thing that I could have done was return to Whitestag Castle and make myself marshal. That's it, you know, so I could have made myself marshal and then we would have been able to uh, hopefully command him to do our bidding, which uh, I think he should be, you know, perfectly happy to do that. But uh, yeah, the point is, is that I didn't, I personally didn't think I had the time to go and do that, but maybe I did, who knows. Anyway, it seems like the Ravenstone are being defeated by the Fears Vein like no one's business, which is actually really good for us. Hopefully they'll make peace with us relatively soon. I wouldn't mind that. And I wouldn't mind going to Salian. I'm just going to drive by, shall we say, drive by Seven Cross Keep. Ooh, okay. So they actually, oh, Jam, wait a minute. Is that the guy that is actually really good? And I was actually thinking of marrying that guy, Jamshid Khan. Is that the guy? Let me actually just take a quick look here. Jamshid Khan. Yes, that is that is the guy. He is a uh, an upstanding vassal. He has no wife, and uh, I think I think he could be a really really good prospect for marriage for us. And uh, well, speaking of marriage, someone did warn against actually marrying a lord because apparently you have to pay uh, half their wages now because uh, that's kind of like a uh, kind of like a little bit of a balancing thing from the developers which is understandable because it was quite powerful before that, you know, was pretty powerful to have, you know, to marry and then just have like a, a unlimited amounts of units and things like that. So I, I understand that, but it is uh, kind of unfortunate. <laughs> uh, oh, well, never mind. Okay, so technically what we could do is we could take this guy prisoner and then ask him to maybe marry us. So let's go in here and see. This might actually work. This might actually work. And I don't know whether you noticed. Ooh, very nice indeed. I'll continue that thought in just a second. We will accept this peace agreement. Gain some right to rule and make peace with them. Very good. Anyway, I don't know whether you noticed, but in the text log, it actually said that White Stag Castle has launched a patrol of the Imperium of Iron. And uh, that is obviously, you know, a CKO. You know, it's a CKO from from our uh, knighthood order, which is really great. So they are going to run around and absolutely murder everything in sight because they are basically ready. The only thing that is a problem with them right now is their stats are a little bit low, you know, a little bit lower than I would want them to be, basically. And once they are, once they're sorted out a little bit better, we will be in. Ooh, yeah, I, I can't wait. I really can't wait until these guys' proficiencies are up above 350. And maybe even, uh, you know, up to 400. I mean, that's kind of insane in itself. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm actually unsure what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to actually tell my people to hold fire here so they can bring out their shields. Because I think we're actually going to have to get into the battlements before we actually start firing at the opponent. So we'll see if we can pull that off. As you can see, though, there's... Uh, this might be, this might be problematic. I'm not sure. We'll try it. I mean, I know that Seven Cross Keep was actually a thief of mine in a previous series, and I actually found that it was very, very good, but I, I never had to defend it or anything like that. So this is going to be interesting. Okay, come on, guys. Let's do this. Uh, ah, interesting. Okay, so we actually have to, oh, hello. We have to go this way. Well, does he have a good shield? Oh, yeah, he has a good shield. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, well, not not anymore. Thank you. Yep, shot in the knee. Ah, no, don't shoot me, please. That's not very nice of you. Okay, shoot him in the knee. There we go. Okay, we've got to be a bit careful here. These guys, there's actually quite a few of them, isn't there? All right, I guess I'm actually just going to tell everyone to charge in. Don't use your bows, guys. 
I'm actually just going to get them just to come up here. I'm going to shield them for the most part from some of the projectiles coming at us right now because my Noldor shield is so incredibly powerful that I really don't have to worry about it breaking anytime soon. So I'm just going to let my people just go up here. Doom Maces might not have been the best choice for close quarters situations like this. And that kind of makes me a little bit regretful. But it is basically the best choice of weapon, in my opinion, for basically every other situation. You know, mounted units are great with that weapon. So, kind of makes sense, I guess. Okay, come on, kill, kill him, kill him. Yes, there we go. The farmer, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Tend to your crops, please. And, uh, yes, otherwise we'll just continue to deal some damage here. I've, I've got to be careful as well, because obviously Iron Man, you know, we don't want to die. But we have to be very careful. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do here, actually, is I'm going to tell my people to fire at will now, because maybe they want to change to their bows. Uh, this might be... Uh, this might be a bit more problematic than I anticipated. Let's actually get out my bow real quick. Oh, wow. Okay, they're actually getting knocked unconscious like no one's business. Okay, shoot that guy. Shoot him. And maybe we can shoot that guy as well. It seems like the uh, <laughs> the Dashar archers are actually doing a pretty sizable amount of damage to us right now, which is not exactly great. But we are starting to penetrate them a little bit. Yes. <laughs> we're doing it that way. Mm, yes, we're doing it that way. Okay, we've got to be careful here. Okay, I just want to kill this guy if I can. There we go. And then we'll go back over here. I am going to lose a couple of people. But I think it might be worth it to potentially get a husband. I think. Oh, okay. Hello. Anyone else? No. There's actually no one else trying to shoot me right here. But that's okay. Anyone else trying to shoot me from up here? No. Interesting. I actually thought that I was being shot from there. But okay, apparently not. Yeah, we should be really, really careful here. Really, really careful. I am very low in HP. I really do not want to die if at all possible. And my Iron Knights are doing kind of well. How many have we lost so far? 16 deaths. Hmm. That's a bit... That's a, that's a, bit, a bit more than I actually wanted, but okay. <laughs> oh, I can't really do much about it, to be honest. Oh, I can actually pick up a Doom Mace. Oh, that might be fun. Boom. Oh, hello, Doom Mace. Oh, this is actually... Uh, this might be a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, as you can see, it's actually quite slow in its uh, in its swing in comparison to the Noldor sword that I was using. But obviously, it's going to do much more damage, I would assume, against heavily armored units. And how, how, are, we, how are we doing? How are we doing? Mm, yeah, we've killed three times as many units as they have taken uh, of us out, but... Mm, I gotta say, I was actually hoping for a bit more, considering, but as I've said, my stats of the CKO are really not very good right now, so... It is really a case of us just taking some additional time to let Lethal Durin do his thing. But don't worry about it, don't worry. We have uh, about 80 or 90 or something like that noble recruits ready to be uh, taken, you know, into our uh, CKO and I just need to level them up and everything. And then once they uh, once they level up... Oh, hello. Okay, yeah, once they level up, then of course... Oh, you can actually knock down people with this. That's really, really fun. Yeah, anyway, so once that's done, then we'll actually be able to... Uh, start uh, getting them on mass, basically. So we'll be able to be able to have how many units? I don't even know. I mean, hopefully around 200. I I would hope that we'd have around 200 of our CKO. If I can, I would love to have around 300 from the CKO. But obviously that might be that might be a bit problematic, you know, because it's going to be very expensive, you know, very very expensive. The only thing that that does mean is uh, right now we literally have nothing else to upgrade as far as I can tell so basically as long as we have no other costs we should be fine when we all all we have to do is just you know upgrade them once they get to maximum stats 
once Lethaldurin's done all of his uh, all of his training, then uh, yeah, we, we just have to spend like 20k or 30k or something like that per time to level up their proficiencies and strength and agility and all that stuff. And as long as we have cash, that's all that it needs. Oh, and prestige, of course, because you do need prestige as well to be able to do that. But anyway, I'm a bit worried about this, to be honest, because how, how are we doing? Should I go to the top here? This might actually spell my demise, which I would very much appreciate not dying. Yeah. Hmm. Right, okay. So you can see that they're actually spawning in from across the courtyard over there, and they're coming down that little hill there. This actually reminds me of the... Uh, <laughs> This actually reminds me of the Snake Cult Stronghold for the uh, Knighthood Order quest. If you've ever seen one of my previous series on Pendor, then you'll know that uh, it basically it's like you're, you're spawning down there, and then you have to go up. And uh, it's kind of a bit similar, a bit similar to that. So that's, that's kind of interesting in a kind of morbid way, because the Snake Cult Stronghold is very hard to take, because there's over a thousand units in there or something like that. Oh, hello. You're actually kind of proficient. This might be problematic for us. There we go. Take him out. And maybe we can take out this guy as well. Yeah, the Doom Mace is actually pretty fun. But personally, I actually still kind of prefer my Noldor Sword. Because it is just so much faster. And it, it basically enables me to win any duel. Except maybe against an Noldor Twilight Knight or something like that. But... I'm actually kind of surprised that we are not being able to push forward any further than this. And more enemies are coming in. Yeah, I'm actually wondering whether we should go out and come back in, but we have knocked so many of them unconscious because of the Doom Maces, which is exactly the reason why it might be an idea to swap out the Doom Mace at some point, just so that they can start actually killing enemies rather than knocking them unconscious. So I think what I'll try to do in my off-screen time, I'm probably going to go and take a bunch of people prisoner, like I mentioned earlier in this episode. And with them, just basically earn, like, I don't know, 100,000 or something like that, because it's going to be very easy for us to do that. We literally just fight anything that we can get our hands on, and they're literally going to sell for an amazing amount of cash every single time you do that. So if we can do that and get 100k, 150k, something like that. It's going to take a while, obviously. But if we can do that, then that's going to be really, really good. It's going to build a very strong foundation for our CKO. And once Lethal Durin's done with training, then we'll be able to advance them to the uppermost echelons of excellence, basically. It's just going to be so, so good for them. But uh, obviously at the moment, that is, that is quite far away. You know, Lethal Durin's going to take quite some time to continue doing his training and everything. Ah, it looks like we're actually starting to push into the staircase right here, which is actually really good, because that is maybe the beginning of the end for our opponents. We have to be very careful here, though, because if I slip, if I fall, if I take any damage from an arrow or anything like that, that is me dead. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully that will not be the case here. But I think we should be okay, as long as I take my time and uh, hopefully not die from any opponents coming in. Then it should be okay. As you've seen though, I am actually taking a lot of casualties. Thankfully we've only lost 30 to death, which is kind of remarkable considering what a complicated defensive formation or structure this actually is. They, uh, they really did a very good job on the defensive measures here because, I mean, literally every single situation we've gotten ourselves in is some kind of bottleneck. And i got to say that that's pretty, uh, pretty frightening, you know? Pretty frightening for the most part. Okay, I've got to be a bit careful here. Can you imagine me getting killed by a heretic minion? <laughs> uh, I can imagine it, yes. I can definitely imagine that. We have to be very careful as well because I think enemies can also come from the staircase here. So even if I am fighting over in that doorway right there, then enemies can also come from behind me. So it is a little bit of a dicey situation, but I think considering I am seeing mostly allied kills right now, I think we should be fine. I think most of the enemies are now just literally recruits 
and lower tier units, which I am very pleased about seeing. Unfortunately, that does not stop some of our Iron Knights from getting killed. And uh, that reminds me, I actually have to go and see how much HP our Iron Knights actually have, because I am unaware of that. I, I actually don't know how much they have. I actually haven't had a look at their full stats in quite a while, so hopefully we'll be able to see that relatively soon. And it seems like we're actually starting to push down now, which is really nice. And we're starting to use our actual archery now as well. That's very good. Oh, there we go. They're actually starting to get out there. Oh, oh no. My last Doom Guide? Are you serious? Ah, oh, that's a shame. Oh, well. Never mind. Yes, my last Doom Guide has finally fallen, which I got to say is a very sad moment because that Doom Guide, I think, has been with us since... I don't even know. I mean, I'm sure one of you can remember. When did we get that Doom Guide? Like, episode 7 or something like that? I mean, yeah. It's been a long time since... That Doom guy joined us. Oh, wow, that's that's kind of fitting. 69 Renown. Really? Come on now. Uh, yes, okay, well. As you can see, we lost 10 Iron Sergeants and 13 Iron Knights. I gotta say, I will take that. I will take that. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. All right, and uh, now we can actually take him prisoner, which is pretty cool. And then we might, might be able to persuade him to join us. So I'm actually going to do that. And Leslie's equipping some steel bolts. That's perfectly fine with me. And then we'll just take a couple of things. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we've got a whole bunch of rescued prisoners here, which is really nice, too. Obviously, most of it is not going to be that great, which is a little unfortunate. I was hoping maybe they'd be a little bit better than this, but I, I this, is, this was not the main reason why I was doing it, of course. So let's just take that. Empire Cavalry, uh, Pendor Armored Bowman, I guess we can take these as well. Uh, mercenary Warriors, I mean, they're really expensive. That's the main problem about taking the Mercenary Warriors, but I'll take them anyway. And what about the Red Fletcher Longbowman? They're pretty good, I guess. Uh, we just have so much... Okay, fine, we'll just take these. Hmm... We'll take those. I guess we'll take the Empire Cavalry, Peasant Women. They level up into my favorite units, so why not? And then we have a bunch of really cool units to take prisoner. And I wish I could have found a Ransom Broker before we actually did this siege. Because I uh, should have probably known that I was going to take many of, them, many of them prisoner. So that was a huge error on my part. But oh well. Can't really do much about it now. Okay, uh, oh yeah, load of Reavers, that's really nice. Now you got Stalkers, Empire Light Infantry can go away, Cobra Warriors as well, Singalian Horsemen, I think they sell for a pretty decent amount, but I'm going to just bet on the fact that Reavers are much, much better. And then, of course, look at these Noble Riders and everything, it's just insane, there's just so many, oh no, it's just so many, I can't believe it, I can't do anything about it. Uh, that is terrible. That is terrible. Okay, Ghazi Stalkers, why not? Yeah, I'm going to lose all those prisoners, but ugh, I can't really do much about it. Okay. So, we're going to give this to uh, Boadis, I believe. That's what we'll do. No one is upset about that, which is great. And she can garrison it however she wants. And that's going to be really nice. Okay, so there you go. Seven Cross Keep has now been taken. We have consolidated our territory a little bit better. And uh, bear in mind that we are now at peace with Ravenstern. So the only people that we actually have to focus on now are the Dashar. And I think Kennet Castle is probably going to be our next target. Mm, I, I'm a bit unsure about that, to be honest, because if we take that, then we are on the border between the Fjordsvein and the Sa and Salian. And basically what that's going to mean is that we could potentially see a war declaration from them, which would be... Quite bad. That would be quite bad. I don't really want to fight the Fjords Vein right now because they are quite strong, but I guess we're, we're pretty strong as well, aren't we? I think we're pretty strong. Anyway, heavy infantry, archers, and maiden scout. There we go. I do need to find a ransom broker. I'm hopeful that we'll maybe have one at Laria, so let's just go over there real quick and see exactly uh, what's going on there. I, I think if I sell this 80 prisoners, I will be getting at least 20,000 or something like that. 
and I'm hopeful that they might be, no, no, no ransom broker, unfortunately, but I'm going to wait here for some time anyway. Seems like my forces do need a little bit of a respite. And so that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.